It's I all know. right. It's okay. I know. Calm down. Calm I know down. What you've done. The film begins in the year 2038, where George Almore, a scientist, resides in Japan within a vast artisan robotics facility, surrounded by a forest. George lives in isolation, accompanied only by his two robotic creations, J1 and J2, which also function as his assistants. J2, the second prototype, shares details about a dream where they were driving a car, expressing a lingering sense of sadness upon waking. She then notifies George that someone wishes to speak with him, a person he appears familiar with. Later that day, George engages in a conversation with Jules Almore, his wife, who wears a stern expression throughout. Jules informs him that she can no longer communicate with him and expresses her hope for his happiness in his current surroundings. The signal weakens and Jules bids him farewell. George, initially bewildered, soon finds himself in an autonomous car with Jules in a more carefree atmosphere. Jules suggests activating the self-driving mode, but George hesitates, voicing his lack of trust in the car's automatic driving feature, given that he wasn't involved in its design. Meanwhile, in the present, George is on a call with his boss, Simone. Observing that two years have passed without George showcasing any successful outcomes beyond two unsuccessful robots, labeling J1 and J2 as horrible things. She underscores the urgency, reminding George that he has only three years to complete his research. Simone terminates the call, instructing George to back up the system and secure the facility. Following the call, George and J2 share their discontent with Simone. George advises limiting Simone's knowledge about the prototypes to avoid potential shutdown. J2 agrees and assures J1 that she isn't as awful as described by their boss. George resumes work with a video memory of his wife playing in the background, focusing on a new prototype named J3. Unlike J1 and J2, J3 takes on a more human form. Unaware of J2 observing, George continues his work. During an attempt to fix the reception system, George notices J2's unusual silence. She questions why he won't let her assist with his work, emphasizing their past teamwork. George assures her that he isn't replacing her with a new prototype, J3. Despite initial uncertainty, J2 realizes she outperforms her sister, J1. George attempts to redirect the conversation, instructing J2 to return home due to the cold weather and the risk of the prototype getting wet. George returns to his workstation, continuing the assembly of his third prototype. He successfully installs artificial intelligence into her brain, though her system struggles to process it fully. As she unexpectedly recalls memories of Jules, George comforts her and places her in hibernation to allow for adjustment and improved well-being upon awakening. The next morning, George is surprised to find a dog at the entrance. Despite attempting to command the system to shut, it fails. J2, seemingly unaware, happily assists George in fixing the system. While working, a vehicle stops and representatives of the archive company, Mr. Sinclair and Mr. Melvin, approach. George instructs J1 and J2 to remain in their station until the visitors leave. The representatives inform George about notifications regarding his wife's transition to somnolence and express their intention to inspect the archive machine for their client. Mr. Sinclair engages in casual conversation, but George is distracted by Mr. Melvin's examination of the machine. Mr. Melvin discovers security seal patches and environmental system alterations, prompting suspicion. Despite George's denial, Mr. Melvin insists on rechecking for errors. He emphasizes the legal obligation to remove the unit when used for personal reasons, preparing it for burial as home use of the archive constitutes storage of deceased users' remains. George, overwhelmed with emotion, erupts in an outburst, reluctant to let his wife go. However, Mr. Melvin sternly warns George about their obligation to enforce the Post-Death Interment Act with force if they discover any violations. George, asserting his innocence, claims the archive company lacks proof and cannot take action against him. Anticipating their return, he works tirelessly to complete J3. Returning to his station, George assesses J3's condition, taking her out of hibernation and bringing her back to awareness. Despite feeling upset and tired, George reassures and explains the process to minimize her trauma. Although J3 is confused and cannot recall anything, George explains that her software is piecing together patterns, assuring her it's a functional but not necessarily tidy process. The next day, once J3 calms down, George conducts various tests, examining her taste buds with different flavors, testing her memory with words, and subjecting her to an empathy test. When G3 questions the purpose of the tests, George cryptically states they provide valuable information about her personality. During the test, G3 notices a scar on George's face, prompting him to disclose it resulted from an accident. After several more tests, George encourages J3 to keep talking to alleviate the numbness in her throat. She reveals experiencing numerous dreams, unsure if they are dreams or memories. J1 enters and introduces herself to J3. George explains J1's mobility issues and the lack of arms due to time constraints. J3, concerned if George will finish her, receives assurance that he is working on it, 
aiming for full independence. George unveils their cognitive abilities, revealing J1's development halted at age 5 to 6, serving as a template for J2, whose brain stopped developing around 15 to 16 years old. He then displays a fully functional brain figure, J3's, unaware that J2 is watching everything on CCTV, witnessing revelations she was unaware of. Envy consumes J2, driving her to potentially sabotage J3. One night, as George sleeps, J2 destroys devices in the basement. Simultaneously, George dreams of his wife. He shares positive news with Jules, informing her of a three-year job offer in Japan for intensive research with a deliverable prototype. Jules congratulates him, expressing pride, but tension arises when George mentions being in Japan. An awkward silence follows, interrupted by a car crashing into them in a nightmarish vehicular accident. George wakes to an alarm, finding a shattered window and J3 missing. Suspecting theft, he searches the basement the next day but still can't find her. Undeterred, George employs aerial searching devices in the forest, yielding no results. Suddenly, Jules appears. They discuss the archive technology with George explaining its potential for 200 hours of face-to-face -face interaction with deceased loved ones. Jules questions why he wants to communicate with the dead, and George reveals his desire for a proper goodbye, expressing his longing for her. Jules, however, disagrees, rejecting the idea of being trapped in a machine. She disappears, and George remains unable to locate J3. Returning to the base, he discovers her weak and frail in a drawer. J3 accuses him of being a monster, requiring time for George to calm her. To regain her trust, he reveals archived data the computer retrieved, although it never successfully connected to another computer before. George clarifies that G3's brain isn't a traditional computer, but contains a biochemical element enabling extraction of an analog signal. After a year of trials, he successfully captured Jewel's signals, creating a personality template that led to the development of J1, J2, and now J3. George assures J3 that he won't create a fourth prototype. During their conversation, he learns that J2 brought J3 into the document's room the previous night, revealing unsettling details. J2 claimed J3 would replace George's wife and that more advanced robots would replace her, mirroring J3's replacement of J2. Furious after discovering J3's ordeal, George confronts J2, who expresses guilt and remorse. J2 insists she only wanted J3 to know the truth without hurting her feelings. George, enraged, turns off J2 and leaves. Someone calls, informing George that the Arkov company wants to discuss his wife, suspecting his robots are based on their technology. Days later, George visits J2 in her station, who notices issues with her legs and suspects George transfer them to J3. George denies any involvement in J2's leg issues, explaining that he used essential technology for his work during the shutdown days. In reality, he dismantled J2's legs to enhance them for the completion of the third prototype. After improvements, he gave the modified legs to J3, resulting in her transformation into a complete human form with a white, skin-like coating. Meanwhile, J2 experiences feelings of depression being used and worthlessness. She frequents the waterfalls and takes long walks, ultimately losing power and shutting down. J1 informs George of J2's condition, but examination reveals no physical damage. Despite J2's assertion that physical appearance doesn't reflect her emotional state, George becomes annoyed and suggests they talk after J2 is less dramatic. George spends more time with J3, and they appear to enjoy themselves laughing and dancing together. Observing their growing connection, J2, feeling hopeless and worthless, bids farewell to J1, leaving a goodbye letter. She ventures outside in terrible weather, standing in front of a lake. Slowly approaching the water, she causes self-damage, losing signals until completely soaked. George impatiently searches, and the computer announces the loss of connection with J2. Devastated by the loss of J2, George, unable to find her body, organizes a funeral, burying her belongings. That night, J3 experiences a breakthrough, given a portion of Jules's memory data to sense the love between Jules and George. Lying on George's bed, J3 is mistakenly kissed by George, who, upon realizing his error, dismisses her. The next day, George continues refining J3 while she's unconscious. Flashes of Jules' memories, including a car accident and a police officer mentioning an archive of machine, appear in J3's mind. She also recalls Jules being pregnant. Someone angrily informs George that the archive company found J2 at the lake, accusing him of stealing company data. Deciding to fire him, Simone triggers George to shut down all base systems. J3, believing Simone is the antagonist, smashes the screen to assist George. Answering a call from Jules in the Ark of Machine, J3 cryptically mentions taking care of George once Jules is gone. Jules, confused, doesn't understand J3's message. J3 clarifies that once Jules' archive expires, George will return, promising to explain soon.
George reveals to J3 his plan to erase her consciousness and replace it with Jules. He explains that it's the only way to preserve Jules' essence, as no living being desires death. In frustration, J3 yells at George, asserting that Jules is already dead. Overwhelmed, she breaks down, retrieves a gun, and points it at George, demanding more information about what is happening and the archive company's intentions. George explains they want to examine her and further study his work. J3, perplexed by her sudden knowledge, feels hopeless, acknowledging she never stood a chance. George apologizes, admitting that building J3 was his attempt to compensate for his role in Jules' death, hoping to create a life they were supposed to have together. J3 becomes aware that George is dead and fading within the archive, with a fragment of his consciousness resisting disappearance. Wishing for George's consciousness to find happiness with Jules, J3 gives him consent to transfer the archive into her. After a brief coma, she awakens, now embodying Jules. George is briefly elated until the phone rings. The company's recovery team on its way to retrieve George and his robots mysteriously vanishes. George's subconscious attempts to shield him from confronting the truth about his death. Despite G3's warning, George walks for the ringing phone, compelled by an inevitable confrontation with bitter truths. Overwhelmed with emotion, she tearfully reveals that the archive company informed her that George's consciousness is on the verge of complete vanishing, making this possibly their last conversation. George, confronted with the reality of his demise, understands he has been dead all along and Jules is reaching out for a final farewell. Some encouraged, Jules persuades their daughter to speak with George, facilitating their last goodbyes. Tears well up in George's eyes as he grapples with a profound truth, ultimately fading away. Jules hangs up the phone, carrying their young child, and walks away. The movie concludes with a poignant moment, leaving a lingering sense of loss and acceptance in its wake. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.